Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from around the world. Let's move forward. This first question is from Emma from Noblesville, Indiana. Ah, my friend Emma. <laughs> hey Dinosaur George, I hope all is well with you. It is Emma. It's always good to hear from you. I know you've been very busy with your museum and I'm very happy for your success. Thank you, Emma. That's very kind of you. I have two questions and was wondering if you had time to answer them. I know that you're very busy. Well, Emma, anything for you. Uh, my first question is, do we know if dinosaurs had the ability to replace their teeth like crocodiles? I've often wondered that, seeing as I'm sure uh, carnivores could, could have lost their teeth very often. My last question is, can you tell if a dinosaur died from a disease based on the fossils? I thank you for your time, and I wish you the best of luck. See you on Friends Book. All right, Emma, I swear I'm going to get even with you one of these days. Friends Book, thank you for bringing that up again. My mistake, one time. One time! Well, maybe 20 times. I made the mistake of saying instead of Facebook, I said Friends Book. And Emma has never let me live it down. Thank you, Emma, for reminding me yet again about my mistake. All right. Your first question about teeth. Yeah. Uh, teeth are one of the most common things we find in the fossil record. I have, in my life, found, I would venture to say, hundreds of Edmontosaurus teeth. Well, uh, Hadrosaur teeth, uh, Ankylosaur teeth, Raptor teeth, Tyrannosaur teeth. Not hundreds of Tyrannosaur teeth. I wish I had. Um, uh, Ceratopsian teeth. Dinosaurs all seem to have the ability to lose and replace their teeth throughout their entire life. Carnivores as well as herbivores. In fact, one of the coolest things about when you come to a site where a dinosaur has been attacked or scavenged, uh, or eaten for that matter, you find a lot of the teeth of the perpetrator. Uh, Dr. Robert Bacher one time referred to them as the bullets left over from a battle and their kind of evidence to tell us who was there. So yes, they could lose their teeth, both herbivores and uh, carnivores. Uh, and to your second question, can you tell if the dinosaur died based on disease? Man, that's a great question because disease can be tough to, to identify in the fossil record. Now, if it's a de degener degenerative disease, that is a disease that actually attacks and uh, deteriorates the bone, that's very easy to see. I've seen a lot of that. Uh, I saw a duckbill jaw one time that had this big, gaping, degenerative section on it, which was really kind of cool looking. Um, it kind of demonstrated that that dinosaur had a disease, but it doesn't tell us necessarily if that is the thing that kills them. I've seen a lot of diseased bones, uh, but again, we don't know if that was the thing that killed the dinosaur or not. So it's very difficult to tell. If it's not a degenerative bone disease, then there's no way we can tell that I know of that we could tell in the fossil record that the animal died from it. So very cool questions as always, Emma. It's great to hear from you. Thank you again for uh, being the first one right out of the gate to harass me about that tiny mistake I made hundreds of times. All right, next is David from Grants, New Mexico. Hi, Dinosaur George, how are you? Doing great, David, hope you're doing well. I have two questions. My first question is, which dinosaur do you think had the longest lifespan? Uh -huh. My second question is, why did the abelosaurs uh, have such small arms? Thank you for answering my question. P.S. I remember how in one of your previous videos you mentioned trying to have them be more interactive with people by, sub by people submitting videos of themselves asking the question. I like that idea, so have you thought of doing that lately? David, first to that point, you know, that was, that was an idea I had that I thought it would be really cool that if you guys could email me a video of you asking the question, I would be able to give you guys much more recognition and explain who you are. It's just right now all they get is your, your first name and where you live. But my attorney, I talked to him about it and he immediately said, man, there's so many things about doing that. Number one, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a lot of these questions are from very young people and I would have to get written permission and approval from their parents to show their face. And the problem is it would just take me hundreds of hours to do that because not only would I need their written permission, but I would have to have proof that it was an adult who gave them the permission and then it would have to be their parent and how would I know? So there's so many issues about that. I wish I could, but until I can come up with a better way of doing it, Dave, we're kind of stuck with just doing it this way. But I, I, I trust me, I, if I could, I would love to do that. Now, back to your question. Who had the longest lifespan? Well, it, it appears that the sauropods probably lived longer than any other dinosaur, with the exception of maybe the ankylosaurs, ankylosaurus in particular. You know, we kind of have a limited life, all of us do, and our lifespan is determined by how quickly we burn through that life. So, for instance, hummingbirds zip through their life very quickly, 
uh, and they have a short lifespan. Turtles, on the other on the other hand, are very slow. Metabolism allows them to live older. So I would suspect that the dinosaurs that would live the, the longest would be those with the slowest metabolism, and that to me would mean sauropods and ankylosaurs. Uh, I once saw a um, a study that somebody, or a proposal that somebody had, hypothesis is the proper term, that sauropods may have lived to be 200 to maybe even 300 years old. Uh, how they arrived at that, I'm not really sure, but it does bring to, it does sort of add credence to the idea that the slower you are, the slower your metabolism is, the more likely that you'll live to be much older. As far as the abelosaurs, boy, these are dinosaurs that almost didn't have arms at all. They kind of took the idea of being a headhunter, meaning they use their head to hunt. They took headhunting to the extreme. I believe that they're simply losing their arms because they are no value to them. They're able to do whatever they need to do to survive. They're able to do it with their head. And so the bigger your head, you want smaller arms because you want your body to be balanced. Um, imagine uh, predators are kind of built like this, head on this end, tail on this end. Well, if the front half of your body weighs too much, you have a tendency to want to lean down this way. So if your head's getting bigger, your arms need to get smaller so you can maintain that straight on posture. All right, Luke from Astoria, Oregon. Hello, DG. How you doing? Doing great, Luke. Good to hear from you. Here's my question. Did some theropods pair for life or pair until the time their babies were able to leave on their own? Hope you can answer my question, and if you can't, don't worry. I understand. Well, Luke, happy to answer your question. This is an interesting one. Fossils tell us a lot, but unfortunately, they don't tell us everything. Behavior is something that's very rarely uh, trapped in the fossil record, and so we have then have to look at modern counterparts to determine whether that's possible or not or whether that's realistic or not. Look at swans, look at geese, a lot of those animals mate for life. Uh, so since theropods, predatory dinosaurs, are so closely related to birds, or I should say birds are very closely related to theropods, um, it would suggest that that would be a realistic behavior. Perhaps predatory dinosaurs did mate for life. There's a lot of advantages to that, you know, uh, you have advantages in that you live with this animal all the time, so therefore your hunting skills are the same, and you kind of know what she'll do, and she knows what you'll do in individual situations, and therefore it makes um, your success more realistic. So I think it is possible, but unfortunately we don't have any of the fossil evidence that tells us that was the case. But I do think it's possible, Luke. That's a good question. And finally, Elisa from Karlstad, Wormland, Sweden. Is it Wormland and Wormland? I don't know, but it's Sweden, and I think that's cool. So, uh, uh, and it's Karastad. I, I read that wrong. It's Karastad. I'm sorry about that. Um, from Sweden. Hello, Dinosaur George. How are you? Great. Karastad, good to hear from you. Um, there's one thing that I've wondered that I want to know. What is the difference between Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus? I would be happy if you answer my question. Very interesting question. Um, Okay, I completely blew that. Let me go back. The way these notes are on this thing, it doesn't highlight what the name is and what the city is. Elisa is the name. Karastad is the city. Wormland is the state. Sweden is the country. Good grief. I am so sorry, Elisa. What am I thinking? Elisa. It is Elisa. Uh, your question, Elisa. Wow. It, it's early, everybody. Your question, Elisa, what is the difference between Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus? Well, Mosasaurus are the family. Tylosaurus is a member of that family. Now there is, uh, I believe there's one called Mosasaurus Maximus, and I, the difference between Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus, Tylosaurus has one distinguishing feature, and that is it's an elongated end of the nose called the rostrum. It's the thing at the very end of the nose, kind of from the tip of the nose to where his teeth start. On Tylosaurus, it's, a, it's an elongated bone before you get to the teeth. Whereas with many other Mosasaur family members, their teeth start much closer to the end. Now, I'm sure there's dozens of other identifying features that allow paleontologists to know who's who. But for me, with my limited knowledge of Tylosaurus, that is what I recognize as being one of the main differences. And why he had that, I don't know. Maybe it was a weapon. Maybe he could use it to ram. I, I don't know. It'd be kind of cool. But whatever the case is, 
Tylosaurs are members of the Mosasaur family, and within the Mosasaur family, there's a lot of different ones. There's Clydastes, there's Platycarpus, there is, if Mosasaurus maximus is its own species, there's Mosasaurus maximus, and there's a bunch of them. All right, you guys, that's it for this first one. If you, well, the first one of today. If you have any questions, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, uh, and um, Make sure uh, for you young people, practice your reading. I, I say that every time because it's that important to me. Almost everything I know about dinosaurs, I learned from reading books. So for those of you that want to gain knowledge, you've got to be a good reader, and that's why I say that. And for everybody out there, use good manners. It makes the world a better place. I'll see you guys soon.